Uh, Manikandan, you are able to see the screen PPT? Yes, sir. So we have completed uh, unit one that is in VDDC. First unit we have completed. Okay, that is uh, we have seen uh, five problems. See, most of the problems will be coming from that model. Uh, if you are uh, uh, chances are more that is uh, the same problem may come. Okay, because uh, all the university problems we have uh, discussed. So what you are going to do? Go through the problems what we have seen in unit one and theory questions also what we have discussed. Okay. Uh, I have shared okay, questions also. For example, okay, let me show it again because uh, see what are the theory questions. You know, these are the theory questions. Okay, they have asked what is system modeling, vehicle body design conservation, and derive the velocity and acceleration of piston. Okay, this uh, you might have studied in engineering uh, mechanics of machines. Okay, so this one design variable we have discussed. Parameter to be considered design a vehicle. Okay, these are the theory questions they have asked. So this one I have explained in the first class itself. Then uh, problems we have seen one problem in Morse test and one problem the eight cylinder uh, automobile engine finding all the parameters brake power and other things. And the last problem we have seen it is somewhat. Uh, different one related to volumetric efficiency and we have seen uh, another problem also see all the questions are uh, asked based on this uh, problem only okay so data can be changed but uh, methodology will be same okay and this is another problem this can be solved using that methodology what we have seen uh, before okay so note on this problem i i have shared this in whatsapp i think okay if not i will be sharing it again what are the questions mm. Uh, will be asked in unit one. So I have collected all these questions from the previous year question paper. Okay, so these are the okay, questions sir. study in unit uh, one. And regarding unit two, see unit two, there are uh, problems only. They are uh, asking in uh, They will be giving uh, importance to problems only. We will be seeing this uh, problem. Okay, so. I have comprised what are the important questions in unit one. So these are the important questions. We'll be seeing uh, one by one. And they have asked uh, a performance curve theory question. So resistance theory question they asked. So these are the theory questions they have asked. Okay. So whatever questions I'm uh, giving no, in unit one and unit two, you prepare answer for that. That will be sufficient. So before seeing to the pro uh, problem, we will uh, see the theory. Okay. See in this uh, unit two, no, uh, we are going to see uh, resistance to vehicle motion. Uh, resistance to vehicle motion means I have to drive my vehicle. That is a uh, uh, from engine, I am getting power and I have to drive my vehicle. That is, I have to move forward, okay? But uh, moving forward, uh, we have to understand the dynamics uh, involved in it. That is, what are the forces will be assisting us in driving and what are the forces will be opposing our uh, driving. So in this, uh, we are going to see the both the forces. That is, a uh, tractive force or tractive effort. That will be the force that will be helping to propel the vehicle that will be coming from engine okay from engine i will be getting a power that is the engine torque we can say power or engine torque that torque will be converted as a force when it is acting at the wheels that is between a tire and ground it will be a force okay so that force will be propelling the vehicle so what i have to do is i have to optimize that force that is optimize the force means i have to choose what type of engine my engine design should be such that you should be able to provide that tractive force to overcome the resistance okay so that only we are going to see so what are the resistance we have to add all the resistance and what should be the tractive uh, force initially that is at uh, gear one what should be the tractive force to overcome the resistance then after that uh, how i have to modify my uh, torque 
that is uh, what uh, tractive force I will be getting in the second gear, what will be the excess force, how the excess force can be utilized for acceleration, hill climbing, like that uh, we are going to discuss. Okay. So first of all, we will be discussing about uh, resistance. That is, there are different resistance. There is air, rolling resistance. So we will be uh, discussing about the resistance. Once the resistance have been described, we will be discussing about driving force. That I told no tractive force. That is a driving force. Then what will be the power requirement for different loads and acceleration? And what is the maximum power calculation? So these are the things we are going to see in uh, unit two. And we'll be seeing it in the problem also. Okay. So mostly uh, you need to, you are getting a problem only. Some, uh, if it is going to be two parts, one part will be eight mark question and another part will be uh, seven or uh, 13 marks. No, it may be five. One theory question for five, problem may be eight. So anyway, they can ask, okay. Okay, sir. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to explain you what are the power for propulsion that is uh, for uh, moving the vehicle forward we are going to find the expression for the power okay so now listen there are two terms uh, slowly i will be explaining this parameter because i have increased the image size so that it will be visible see p suffix v p suffix v means power required by the vehicle that is a uh, how much power the vehicle requires to move along Okay. And P required is engine power. That is power available at the uh, crankshaft. From the crankshaft, power is going to come to the road wheels. So it will be passing through clutch, transmission, uh, gearbox, uh, propeller shaft. Then it will be passing through differential uh, and it will be coming to the uh, road wheels. So what will happen? My power required will not be same as that of power uh, required by the vehicle. Some losses will be there. That losses will be accounted into transmission losses. That is from engine, I am going to transmit this power to the road wheel. So I need transmission component. So when the power is going to pass through this uh, transmission component, there will be losses. So what will happen? Engine brake power is uh, 100 kilowatt. Uh, power required by the vehicle will be, uh, that is a uh, power available. Uh, I can't say power uh, required. Power available at the vehicle will be 80 kilowatt. Okay. This 80 kilowatt is the power available at the vehicle. This 20 kilowatt difference is, uh, it has been last in the transmission. Okay, due to friction or whatever uh, factor, it may be last. Then uh, this term is somewhat uh, different. That is, uh, I told you 80, you know, that is power available. You should not use the word uh, required. Power available at the vehicle. And PV is power required by the vehicle. That is, when I want to move the vehicle uh, forward, how much power I require. So my power available, uh, say for example, 80, power required, say 70 means I'm having 10 excess, okay, 10, uh, 10 power, uh, 10 kilowatt excess. I can say it in torque also, okay, uh, 10 Newton per meter excess, okay. So that excess will be used for accelerating the vehicle. That is, I can increase my speed so that torque will be less and speed can be increased, okay. Otherwise, I can use that excess torque for hill climbing. Hill climbing means uh, I can move along a gradient if necessity is there. And I can, uh, uh, what I can say, drop or pull, I can tow yeah, another vehicle. So always this excess power can be used for different application. I can go for hill climbing. I can either increase my acceleration or I can uh, pull uh, another vehicle. But practically, what we'll be doing Whenever excess power is there, we will be accelerating vehicle. We will be going to higher gear. That is, a, I'm uh, going in gear one. Okay, uh, listen carefully. I am going in gear one. That is, I have started my vehicle. I am uh, putting the gear in gear one. Now, I will be having a torque. I'm saying in terms of torque. I'm not saying in terms of power. I'm having a torque. That is, a driving a torque, uh, say, 100 Newton meter that will be converted into force. I'm getting a torque from the engine that will be converted into the force. That is 100 Newton meter means we have to divide it by radius of the wheel. Radius of wheel say two, uh, then uh, it will be 50 Newton. Okay, assume that uh, I am having 50 Newton force that will be helping me to propel the vehicle. Okay, so now see, I will uh, explain you the different cases now. Okay, let me type. 
then you will be knowing it see now a driving force df is 50 new 10 assume okay just for comparison only we are using this Now see resistance, total resistance. Why I am using the word total resistance? No, resistance means we are having wind resistance, aerodynamic resistance, or uh, aerodynamic resistance, wind resistance are both are same. Then rolling resistance, gradient resistance. So what our resistance, say resistance is 40 Newton. Now see, see this one is case one. What will happen now? My driving force is greater than total resistance. Okay. So the vehicle can be moving forward. So case one, I will be able to uh, move the vehicle forward. I'm having excess uh, forces. How much? 10 Newton. 50 minus 40, 10. This 10 Newton can be used for increasing my acceleration so that uh, my total resistance will be matching with the uh, a driving force what will happen the excess 10 newton will be used for increasing my speed okay i will use it for increase my speed so torque will be decreased speed will be increased now the driving uh, force say it is coming to 40 newton okay i am having driving force now 40 newton because i have changed the gear i have uh, reduced the torque and increased the speed okay now my driving force is coming 40 newton total resistance also 40 newton what will happen now the vehicle will be running at constant speed now there is no excess there is no excess force okay so what will happen my uh, this will be the maximum speed that is whenever the driving force is equal to total resistance that is a uh, driving force also 40 newton and uh, total resistance also 40 newton what will happen i will be getting maximum speed why no beyond that i can't give the force for acceleration my vehicle will be moving at constant speed only okay because no excess force i can increase the speed of my vehicle uh, beyond this well, my resistance is 40 my driving force also 40 so what will happen the, I will be having a constant speed. Say I will be driving the vehicle at uh, 50 km per hour. Okay. 50 km per hour. So what happened? Uh, 50 km per hour, I will be moving constant. Okay. I can't either increase my speed. The, I will be going in the same speed. My I can't have a excess power, no surplus power. Okay. So when my uh, resistance getting decreased and uh, consider the second scenario that is uh, i have overcome the resistance my resistance uh, getting resi uh, reduced say 30 newton now see again consider my driving force is 40 newton i am in second gear okay my driving force is 40 newton now my resistance is getting decreased to 10 newton so, uh, sorry 30 newton i am having excess uh, driving force of uh, 10 newton now again i can use it for increasing my speed okay so again i can go to say second gear i can increase my speed i can go to 60 kilometer per hour that is i uh, reducing the torque and increasing the speed so that i am going 60 kilometer per hour when i am going to 60 kilometer per hour say my driving force will be 30 it uh, say it is 30 the vehicle will be moving at constant speed so like that only Whenever uh, resistance is uh, decreasing, I will be having some excess uh, force. The excess force can be going for acceleration. What will happen to the top uh, speed? No, that is, uh, you may drive vehicle at top gear, say gear 3 or uh, gear 4. At that time, torque will be less. That is, uh, you have to understand, at top gear, torque will be less and uh, speed will be more that is I, will, I i might have accelerated well okay that is my speed will be more because i am i have, might have accelerated well 
that is i might have used the xs4 for my acceleration to increase my speed okay so what will happen in top gear my resistance will be more and i'll be using my driving force xs driving force for full acceleration so i'll be uh, meeting a speed uh, at that time what will happen my driving force will be equal to total resistance and uh, beyond that i i don't have any excess power so what will happen that speed will be maximum speed so beyond that i can't uh, increase say 100 km per hour okay so if again i am going to travel in a road when uh, total resistance increases what will i will be doing i will be coming from top gear to third gear in order to meet the low, uh, road characteristics that is a uh, uh, resistance if the resistance is uh, more i have to come to lower gear that is from fourth gear to third gear again i have to sh uh, switch over my gear so that i can increase my torque i can increase my driving force to overcome the total resistance so like this only i will be varying my uh, driving force based on the total resistance this will be done by gearbox engine power is constant we can't have very engine power we are having gearbox no by gearbox only we are providing this variation first gear maximum driving force i will be uh, uh, getting that is maximum torque i will be getting that is for propulsion because first gear my resistance will be more so to overcome the resistance maximum driving force i need in the first gear then second gear uh, what will happen i will be moving to uh, another uh, gear that is i can increase my speed my resistance may be decreased so there will be no necessity for me to provide uh, more torque so i will in gearbox what i will be doing i will be uh, doing a speed increase that is speed increase torque reduction okay so this will be accomplished and uh, subsequently i will be moving to higher gears okay so this is the concept uh, you are going to see in the problem okay so this is the power required by the vehicle and uh, whatever engine power uh, uh, that is uh, required that is a power required by the vehicle first of all you have to know what is our road what is its characteristics okay so based on that uh, i will be identifying what power required at the ve vehicle that is what power i have to supply at the road wheels for supplying the power at the road wheels what is the engine brake power required so based on this two characteristics only i am going to design my engine okay now i am going to travel in a road okay so in, a, in traveling in a road say if i my power required by the vehicle is uh, 60 kilowatt then i will uh, design my engine so that it may have a power uh, 70 kilowatt that is i have to take into transmission losses also so you have to understand this value carefully so based on the road what is the power required by the vehicle and then we have to fix the what is the engine power so these are the characteristics okay now other uh, parameters are capital v is speed of the vehicle in kilometer per hour and uh, transmission efficiency will be you will be using this uh, term new t transmission or drive line efficiency okay then r is uh, total resistance in newton and r suffix a air resistance in newton and r suffix r rolling resistance i will be discussing what are this resistance and rg is grade resistance okay so there are different resistance this aerodynamic resistance will be coming into picture when vehicle is traveling at high speed okay that is uh, when you are traveling at high speed only air resistance will come so that only you might have seen a streamlined car will be there okay previously you will be having a windshield vertically uh, it is not a aerodynamically good design my air drag that is aerodynamic resistance ra will be more in order to reduce that what i will be doing is i will be going for a streamlined uh, car the streamlined car means my drag coefficient will be reduced so that my air resistance can be reduced so that i can save my uh, fuel the power uh, given will not be used in overcoming this resistance but can be used for accelerating the vehicle okay so based on this i can reduce my air resistance okay so let us see what are the different resistance and uh, now
what is the expression you please note down you are having a note no you note down this formula without writing no you will not be able to do the problem okay okay able to understand no doubts no you can ask okay sir money and then alone is there okay okay sir okay uh, take the notebook and write this formula because without writing you can't understand anything you put a you need to what is the formula means i initially i told you know pv for calculating pv i told what i have to know about the road characters of it okay so pv is equal to rv by 1000 1060 that is rv by 3600 kilowatt i will explain you why this uh, thousand and all uh, coming okay you take down this uh, formula pv is equal to rv by 3600 okay r stands for total resistance when that is i will be uh, deciding what is the road characteristics what resistance uh, is going to come in the road and second one is what will be the vehicle speed i have to go that at what speed i have to go okay now i will explain you how this 3600 came okay Three P V. Okay, power required by the vehicle. Okay, so I am writing capital R resistance into vehicle speed V. Okay, uh, I need my power in kilowatt. First of all, listen carefully. R value. Say R value should be in first of all. I will decide R value is a force, so it should be in uh, Newton. Now I am typing the unit. Okay, R is what resistance. Resistance is nothing but force. Okay, it should be in uh, Newton. V, you say V is meter. Second, actually, we will be giving input in kilometer per hour. Say newton meter per hour, second. Now uh, keep it like this, okay? No need to confuse with it. With the initial uh, problem, we will substitute R as newton, V as vehicle speed. When, uh, but uh, conventionally, we will be using kilometer per hour. Before that, I am telling you, it is what newton into meter per second. What is newton meter? Joule, no? Joule per second is what? Yes, sir. Newton. See Newton into meter per second. What is Newton meter? I can write Newton meter as this is work done joule, correct? Joule per second is equal to what? Ah, very good. Joule that is a uh, Newton meter is joule. So joule that is work done. Work done per time. Rate of doing work is what power. Okay. So now what I am doing is. I am ty uh, typing joule per second as watt. Okay, but I need power in kilowatt, so I am putting this thousand. Now, what will be the unit kilowatt? Okay, so you might have understood why this uh, thousand is coming. You understood or not? Any other? Any other? Are you there? Yes, sir. Have you understood how this yes, sir, uh, yes, thousand is coming in the denominator? Okay. Now, what yes, I am going to do, no, uh, that is, we should be in meter per second. Now you got the idea. We should be in meter per second. Then only I will be getting joule per second. That is divided by thousand is kilowatt. Actually, I will be inputting V in kilometer per hour. Okay. So for converting kilometer per hour, for converting 
kilo that is a meter per second i need what the unit will be that is the input will be kilometer per hour listen carefully that is i will be substituting v not in meter per second i will be substituting in what kilometer per second so convert kilometer into meter 1000 meter i can write uh, kilometer as 1000 meter and hour 3600 again okay that is 60 into 60 okay listen so i am substituting v as kilometer per hour so what i am putting i have to convert that kilometer per hour into meter per second then only i will be getting watt the watt is divided by 1000 that is kilowatt now see i am writing no 1000 by i uh, instead of uh, writing 3600 he is writing 60 into 60 that is he is converting second into minute minute into hour now see 1000 with 1000 there is 1000 for kilowatt and 1000 for converting kilometer into meter is getting cancelled 1000 1000 will get cancelled and 60 into 60 is 3600 okay you have understood the formula yes sir how you are getting uh, 3600 so uh, now enna pa kilometer per hour nu sonna sir okay so now you have to tell uh, what should be the unit of r our unit is okay so i am writing here while using this uh, formula my r unit should be in which uh, parameter that is uh, in order to bring the board uh, teaching i am doing like this so that you will have the feel that is uh, already if it is present at that is already it is typed means uh, you may get a uh, board to see when i am typing if you are uh, seeing means it will be similar to writing on the board okay so now you tell me what will be the unit of r that is i am i will be using this uh, r in my formula that is i will be founding a power required to propel the vehicle that is pv is equal to rv by 3600 so my when i am using the r value it will be in which unit i need a answer from you morning and then sir r unit enna parukano what should be the unit for r meter or kilometer sir r man r is force it is a resistance force na newton sir uh, you have to understand na you have to be familiar with that term man so that only i am asking you already i told you, you know r is nothing but see i have written here itself r is newton so see r value should be in newton what about b it should be in meter per second or uh, kilometer per hour i will be under meter, uh, per, second, well, meter per second means uh, that this term will be converting meter per second into uh, that is a uh, for converting Kilo kilometer per hour. per hour into meter per second i am putting what 1000 by 3600 1000 getting cancelled and i am putting 3600 denominator so i can't put the v in meter per second so i have accounted for that that is this 3600 is for converting kilometer per hour into meter per second so i can't uh, substitute v again in meter per second what i have to do kilometer i have to substitute hour. v in kilometer, kilometer per hour, per hour. Per hour. So, yeah why i am explaining this no you should not get confused that is uh, only for uh, mechanics or machine other problems v will be in meter per second that is 6 meter per second or 7 yeah. meter per second for vehicle point of view we'll be using the word kilometer per hour only or whenever vddc or any any automobile problem we will not say v as meter per second we will say v as kilometer per hour so no need of converting the given data what we are doing we are modifying the formula, formula itself so that v is kilometer per hour <coughs> i'll be substituting it directly to get pv so you please remember this i have given in the slide also so when you are finding out pv r should be in newton and v should be in kilometer per hour not only for vddc whatever subject you are studying no the formula will be derived and based on some assumption so in formula when defining the formula itself you should understand what are the units the values are going to take what should be the unit for r what should be the unit for b like that uh, you have to decide okay now see <coughs> there are three resistance okay 
that is R R A aerodynamic resistance, rolling resistance, gradient resistance. Let me show you what is gradient. See, whenever a vehicle is going to move over a slope, no, when it is moving over a slope, grade resistance will come into picture. Otherwise, grade resistance will not come. That is, when a vehicle is traveling on a level road, grade resistance will not come. Okay. <coughs> so see, my resistance is that is when I am moving over a gradient. Okay. There are three values will be there. That is R A, R R, R G. Okay. R A is uh, aerodynamic resistance. R R is uh, rolling resistance. R G is gradient resistance. Okay. So three resistance are there. R A will be coming at high speed, and rolling resistance will be always present in the vehicle uh, due to the characteristics of uh, friction between road and the wheel, and due to other factors. Okay. So rolling resistance will be there. And the RG due to the gradient, uh, I'll be getting RG. Okay. So now, if I'm mo moving over a gradient, RG will come. If I'm moving on a level road, RG will not come. What I will be having? R is equal to R A plus R R. Okay. You are able to understand? That yes, is sir. level road. Level road. That is normally you are uh, driving now in uh, Chamarabakam. Okay. It is a level road. Then uh, only two terms will be coming. R A plus R R. Okay. If you are going to air cut, you will be having a gradient. Okay, so there grade resistance will be coming into picture. So for finding out R, you will be normally using R A and R R. If there is a gradient, you will be using R G. Okay, now, so I know my resistance. I know what speed uh, I have to go. So based on this, I will find what P V. Now next step is, see, now I have uh, find out uh, P V. That is what is the P V. I know based on my resistance and the what speed I have to go. So next one is what P required. That is a uh, for this PV, how much uh, power the engine has to produce. So the next expression, see, for this PV, that is we have calculated uh, before. No, what should be the P required? So P required uh, should be according to the transmission losses. For example, see. P, P, A, my power required by the vehicle is 100 kilowatt. Okay, but uh, my P required, that is engine power, the same thing I can provide, that is uh, engine power, I can produce 100 kilowatt, then it will be not sufficient because some power is getting lasted. So, my engine power should be say 120 kilowatt it should be more than pv this this 20 kilowatt is what last in transmission that is losses in transmission okay this 20 kilowatt power last in transmission okay so transmission losses i am taking into account so this 20 kilowatt is last in uh, transmission so what i have to do I have to account for transmission losses. So what I am doing, I am dividing this vehicle power by transmission losses. Transmission losses I am taking into efficiency. That is transmission efficiency. What will happen? You will uh, divide this 100 kilowatt by 0.2 or 0.3. Like that you will uh, divide. If transmission losses, uh, it is uh, zero means uh, no power is lost in transmission. Practically it is not possible. So always our uh, transmission losses will be uh, there. So what will happen? Uh, my required power will be greater than PV. Why oh, you know here the transmission efficiency, I'll be putting in terms of 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So PV will be getting multiplied. So 100 divided by 0 0.2 something will be getting greater than 100. It will be 120 kilowatt or some other uh, value greater than 100. So now uh, instead of PV, I can use that expression itself. That is uh, for PV expression we have defined no. The first one, okay, I am going to use. So instead of PV, I am putting what? RG 3600 transmission efficiency. So I am asking you to design an engine. That is, I am asking you uh, what power the engine has to be designed. I have to design an engine for which power? I will be giving two values. That is, I will be giving the value of R. I will be giving the value of V. 
and I will be giving the value of transmission losses. So using this formula, you will design the engine. My engine has to produce 120 kilowatt to provide the required vehicle power for propulsion. So like this, you will make a judgment. Okay. So in order to find that only, we have we are having this formula RV by 3600 transmission efficiency. You may ask uh, how this formula came. Always you have to know power is equal to force into velocity. Uh, you might have studied, okay? Power is equal to force into velocity. So that only what I am doing? I am multiplying the force. What is the force required? R multiplied by V, that is vehicle speed. So power is equal to force into velocity. You might have studied earlier. Okay. Now we are going for air resistance. That is aerodynamic sir, resistance. Formula note panikir, sir. Not panikir. Power required either the car, either the tavala in the sign or not. Okay, sir. Okay, have you noted? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, see, for uh, air resistance, there is a formula. For finding out air resistance, we will be having Ka, A, V square. Ka is coefficient of air resistance, and A is frontal area, and V is speed of the vehicle. That is in uh, kilometer per hour. Okay. So, for finding out this, we are having a formula. That is, what will be the air resistance? That is, uh, when you are going in bike, no? when you are uh, traveling at normal speed, say 30 to 40 kilometer, your air resistance will not be coming into picture. That is, you will not see the track that is coming from air. If, same, if you are going at 80 kilometer per hour, you may see that is, uh, air will be opposing your uh, motion. That is your force will be acting on your uh, body. That is if you are traveling in a bike. If a car, what will happen? The force will be acting in the front side of the car. Okay. That is, yeah, the resistance is entirely dependent on projected frontal area. If I am reducing this area, what will happen? I can reduce the air resistance. So that only car's shape, no? Previously, it is what? Uh, vertical one. Now, to improve the aerodynamics, they have gone for streamlined car. I will be showing you. Okay. So, see, we are having a streamlined means my windshield is not uh, vertical it, it was a uh, streamlined and you can see the rear part also why this type of uh, configuration is coming no both for stay as well as uh, for reducing the aerodynamic resistance okay and uh, you see in olden cars now olden cars they didn't concentrate about uh, this windshield see this car this one is olden car what happen? My windshield is vertical. So what will happen when I'm going at high speed? My drag will be uh, more. My engine power is uh, wasted. I'm wasting my fuel to overcome this uh, drag. Okay. But the later only they realized I have, we have to consider aerodynamics. So see, previously when the car came, no, my windshield is vertical. Okay. Later only what we have done? We have streamlined this vertical windshield. Instead of having the streamline, we have gone for what? The aerodynamic shape. Okay. 
so wh why we are going for this aerodynamic uh, shape is to reduce the a that is to reduce the frontal area okay so next uh, you have to understand my air resistance will increase uh, square of v okay square of v means what will happen say Uh, my uh, B say ten, okay. Say ten. Other values uh, say one, okay. My R A will be ten squared is how much? Hundred, okay. Same B. I'm making as uh, twenty. That is, uh, I'm increasing a uh, ten kilometer per hour. What will be the R A now? What is a twenty square? How much, man? Hello. One second. Thousand six hundred, sir. Twenty square thousand. Twenty square four thousand hundred. No, sir. Sorry, four hundred. No. Huh? Okay. So see, the increase in uh, speed of ten. What will happen? My uh, aerodynamic resistance is getting increased. See, hundred to four hundred. Enormous uh, amount of increase is there in uh, aerodynamic uh, resistance. So what I mean to say is, I have to concentrate on my air resistance when I am traveling at uh, higher speed. Okay, because my R A value increases. That is not too linearly. Linearly means. Uh, It will be increasing linearly with respect to v. It is increasing with respect to v squared. So the increase is more when I'm increasing the speed. Okay. So here I'm increasing only ten, and you can see the increase. You see, uh, it is a factor of four. Okay. So what you have to understand is v plays an important role because R a is proportional to v squared. Okay. Then there is a term called coefficient of air resistance. What is this term? No. Uh, this term depends upon the profile of the car that is if i am going for a streamlined car my a also will be reduced and this coefficient also will be reduced you can see for best streamlined car this value is low whereas for average car the value will be somewhat higher and trucks and lorries see for trucks and lorries we will not be bothering air resistance uh, more okay that is uh, you can see it will be point not 45 okay so You need to remember this value. You can say for best streamlined car, K A will be low, and for trucks and lorries it will be I. Okay, no need to remember this value. So note down this formula for air resistance. Okay. If you are having any doubt, you can ask me. No one has joined except you. Mani Gandan, you have left. and then
network problem ah yes. okay you came inside shall we proceed with the class okay you came sir yes sir yes sir ah uh, if you are going out now inform me okay otherwise i might be taking the class for recording purpose only Net okay you come to whatsapp Adil and uh, inform me that is cut a edge sir network problem nal அதான் இப்ப நெட்டு கட் ஆயிடுச்சுன்னா நீ உடனே வாட்ஸ்அப்ல வந்துட்டு எனக்கு ஒரு மெசேஜ் போட்டுரு அப்ப நான் வெயிட் பண்ணுவேன்ல ஏன்னா ரெக்கார்ட் ஆயிட்டு இருக்கு இப்ப நான் ரெக்கார்ட் ஆயிட்டு இருக்கும் போது இஃப் ஒன்லி ஐ எம் ஒன்லி ஸ்பீக்கிங் நோ தட் டசன் லுக் குட் ஸ்டூடெண்ட் ஷுட் பி தேர் சின்ஸ் யுவர் இயர் ஐ எம் டேக்கிங் கிளாஸ் ஃபார் யூ ஓகே ஸோ இஃப் யூ ஆர் நாட் இயர் ஐ வில் பி வெயிட்டிங் ஃபார் சம் ஒன் அதர்வைஸ் ஐ வில் வெயிட் ஃபார் யூ டு ஜாயின் ஓகே சார் ஓகே சார் ஏன்னா இது திஸ் ரெக்கார்ட் சீன் பை ஆல் ஓகே if no student is there it doesn't look uh, good okay so whenever network connection is problem you intimate me in whatsapp parallelly i am having whatsapp also so that immediately i will come and i will uh, stop and i will uh, wait for you okay shall we start the class now morning and then okay sir network you come to area where uh, you are getting a good net man you come outside okay sir okay now it's okay okay shall we start <laughs> sir am i audible sir yeah you are audible I am audible. You are able to hear my voice. Hello. Yes. Morning, and then. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So now, uh, now you copy this formula. Formula for air resistance. You can see air resistance is equal to K A into Y B square. Okay. Ah, uh, copy this formula. Sir. Yes sir yes sir yes sir copied okay so next we will go to rolling resistance okay rolling resistance what what will be you no know, due to the contact between the tire and uh, ground and types of tire so different parameter will be coming or uh, different factors will be influence influencing uh, rolling resistance okay so what you have to do is for finding out rolling resistance there is a simple formula there is no square term it is a linear uh, term only that is you will be having k into w that is k is a constant for uh, rolling resistance you can see uh, here also no need to remember this value just you can summarize k value will be low for good roads that is a uh, friction will be less for uh, loose sand roads it will be increasing okay so you can uh, define k based on the road characteristics for good road the value will be less so if the road is uh, not uh, uh, what to say plain or uh, more friction or muddy off road what will happen my k will be increasing so rolling resistance will be more so note down this formula no need to remember this value just to write kw k is a constant or rolling resistance coefficient and w is total weight of the vehicle you copy the formula and inform me so that i will proceed to the next topic yes left again veliya vandatta che sir mani ganna yes sir try to have a good coverage man otherwise our classes will be affected no what to do sir atol atol net varamatikku sir 
வரும் இங்கே வந்து லேப்டாப்பில் கிளாஸ் எடுக்கும் போது ஜியோ டவர் வரல இப்போ காலேஜ் நெட்டு வரும் போது இப்போ எனக்கே க்ளீனாக வருது ஓகேயா அதனால் நீ என்ன பண்ணுற கொஞ்சம் இப்போ எதுவுமே எல்லாமே ஆன்லைனில் இருக்கிறதுனால பர்பஸ்க்காக ஏதாவது ஒரு நல்ல நெட் கனெக்ஷன் வாங்கி வச்சுக்கோ சரியா ஓகே சார் ஓகே சார் ஓகே இளவரசன் ஸ்கேன் Now see, you have copied this formula, RR is equal to KW. Otherwise, you just uh, listen. If you are waiting yes, outside, no. Just to listen. Okay. So, we have seen the formula for uh, okay, air resistance. And we have seen for uh, rolling resistance. See, now I am going to explain you. What are the factors affecting the rolling resistance? Okay. So, see, rolling resistance on the main, it will be coming from resistance from tire deformation that is hysteresis losses will be coming into picture hysteresis losses na once the tire is going to come into contact with the road tire when the is uh, rubber okay it is we can model it as a spring so what will happen initially the spring will be compressed and once it is leaving the contact region what will happen the springs will be elongated so whatever amount it is compressed it should be elongated but actually it not be like that some amount only will be elongated some amount of uh, force will be getting uh, wasted that will be contributing to the rolling resistance okay then tire slippage apra air circulation around the wheel so these are uh, different types of factor affecting the rolling resistance so already i told you this is a general formula so there is another way of expression my rolling resistance is directly proportional to weight of the vehicle that is here i am putting w the same w i can put what mg mass into gravity due to ac- uh, acceleration okay so i can uh, put uh, g also and there is another uh, formula for rolling resistance if you want you can note down power power formula and this one is force formula that is resistance formula this one is they may uh, you may get a question uh, what how much amount of power is getting wasted due to rolling resistance so what you have to do is you have to multiply the force by velocity you can see here that is a coefficient of rolling resistance weight weight i am putting m into g okay so otherwise you can directly put uh, g and v is should be in kilometer per hour so that only i am putting what 3600 okay so this is the formula that is how much power is getting wasted in a rolling resistance then there is a coefficient called crr crr and the coefficient vand he is uh, finding out uh, he is giving some uh, approximate values but we can find it empirically also based on speed that is uh, rating v and uh, crr we are having this formula 0.01 1 plus v by 147 so you can uh, see this formula for finding out crr okay and then you can see i told you no increasing in speed my drag force will be increasing in a enormous rate whereas my rolling resistance will be increasing in a uh, less rate only so higher speed only i have to concentrate on my drag force okay so see the variation how the drag force is increasing when i am increasing the velocity so you can see my velocity is increasing more okay sorry velocity is increasing my drag force is increasing more whereas rolling resistance you can see the increase is less okay next uh, we are having grade resistance okay so already i have told you what is grade first of all for grade resistance you see this uh, sketch eleverson is online okay eleverson why you are late
they gone to take a breakfast money and then left in seven minute problem okay yes joint now see money and then you are able to hear my voice hello person what about you you come to the chat box and tell me whether you are listening <coughs> my voice is okay you are able to see the ppt okay hello person okay yes sir see now see for grade resistance no the car is uh, traveling over a slope that is a slope this angle is uh, theta okay my car is uh, going over a slope what will happen my weight component will be acting like this that is a yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. like this and this can be resolved into two component one is along the car and another one is perpendicular to the car you can see one is a mg cos theta that is a vertically it will be coming and another one is mg sin theta it will be acting in this direction this mg sin theta is known as grade resistance okay because my car is traveling up my grade resistance is acting opposite to that okay whenever when the car is coming down my grade resistance may acting opposite direction so you have to understand grade resistance will be op acting opposite to the direction of uh, car motion okay so now grade resistance c w sin theta you can write or uh, mg sin theta this theta g is nothing but slope of that grade okay and another important thing is it is sin theta no if the grade means you will not have more value if it is a more value we can't even climb uh, the car can't climb okay so my theta will be having smaller values only so what will happen sin theta will be equal to tan theta that is i can make a assumption for theta value small sin theta is equal to tan theta so instead of sin theta i will be writing what tan theta okay so i will be writing mg tan theta okay tan theta is called grade you understand carefully that is a grade resistance is mg sin theta whereas grade is if i am asking you what is the grade that is tan theta okay and there is another formula for gradeability also that you will be uh, discussing it uh, later now you understood uh, uh, now you please understand g is nothing but grade that is equal to tan theta g okay with the form formula can be asked for two marks what is grade grade is different from grade resistance okay so tan theta g is uh, g and uh, you can write the grade resistance like mg g okay so see r a is equal to that is grade resistance is equal to uh, w sin theta where w is total weight of the vehicle and t is what inclination of the slope to the horizontal inclination of the slope to the horizontal and already told you tan theta is grade percentage grade means you have to write tan theta into 100 what will happen in two marks no they may give a, a slope is so and so degree 20 degree whatever it may be and find the percentage grade so what you have to do you have to find a tan theta what is the tan theta value then you have to multiply by 100 and you can see percentage grade why the percentage grade no that is what percentage grade the vehicle can climb over or uh, 20% 30% okay so like that only i will be designing the vehicle when percentage grade is more i can uh, judge whether the vehicle will be able to climb or not okay so for percentage grade you write tan theta into 100 copy this formula grade resistance ila version and manigandan copy grade resistance after copying it uh, you inform me okay because uh, simply even you are seeing the slides for a problematic paper it doesn't work you have to copy the formula and uh, while solving the problem also along with me you have to solve that is we are trying our level best to create the classroom environment only thing is we are not writing we are typing
Have we copied? Okay. So next, uh, we know about uh, great resistance. And these are the formula for uh, finding out the uh, forces. So uh, you uh, refer this. That is, what are the resistance force acting on a vehicle? In our uh, Giri book, no, we will use the terminology as total resistance, TR. That is, whenever when a vehicle is moving, what are the forces will be opposing that motion? So we discussed about aerodynamic resistance. We discussed about rolling resistance. We discussed about uh, gradient resistance. In addition to that, when a vehicle is moving, there will be an inertia force also. That can be classified as what? Resistance. Okay. So you can see this one is a inertia force that will be acting opposite to the motion. Okay. So inertia force, aerodynamic resistance, rolling resistance, and gradient resistance. Okay. Now see, this is the sketch. You will be studying in a vehicle dynamics also. That is, for this wheel torque, what are the different forces and different torques acting at the wheel? You can see contact patch region. No, this region is contact patch where the tire is making a contact with the road. So this one is X direction, longitudinal direction where the wheel will be traveling. And this one Y is lateral direction. And this one is uh, Z is vertical direction. So three coordinates are uh, existing for the wheel or uh, a vehicle. Okay, that is uh, X, Y, Z. X longitudinal, Y lateral, and uh, Z is vertical. So X, uh, in that X direction only, my tractive force as well as uh, resistance force will be acting. That is tractive force will be acting from left to right, assume. My resistance force will be acting right to left, opposite to that. Okay, so tractive force will be acting along the direction of wheel heading. That is, a uh, in which direction the wheel is going to move. So my wheel is moving in this direction now, clockwise. So my tractive force will be acting in this direction. Okay, and this one is slip angle. We will be studying uh, later. Okay, this alpha is uh, slip angle, and this one is camper. You might have studied in automotive chassis, camper. So we are having a X, Y. So along X, we were telling that force is tractive force, that is FX. And along Y, we are telling the force as lateral force, FY. And vertical, we will say normal force, that is FZ. Okay. Okay. Next, we are referring automotive in mechanics by Giri. This is... Uh, this is for formula. This formula we have to remember for examination. For solving the problem, we have to refer this formula. Okay? Are you able to see this slide? Because this is very, very important. Ilavarasan, Manigandan. Okay. Yes, sir. See now, you no need to see all the things. You see my cursor movement. That will be sufficient. See, you know the formula for power. Power is what? P is equal to, you know, to pi. Okay? Two pi n t t is a torque divided by sixty. Okay, you see my uh, typing also. Then only you will be able to understand. Two pi n t by sixty. Power will be coming in watt for this. Power will be coming in watt. The same thing. N is engine speed. Okay, N is engine speed RPM. T is engine torque. That is Newton meter. If I am putting 60,000, that is I am putting 60,000, 
my power will be low watt okay so this power is engine power uh, put suffix e p e and this torque is engine torque put suffix t i need to find engine torque okay t e so keeping t e here take the terms to the left hand side so 60000 into p e divided by what 2 pi n so this this is the expression i am getting from my, my basic formula that is p is equal to 2 pi n t by 60000 okay now torque at uh, rear wheels torque at rear wheels there are uh, two things are there you might have uh, studied in automotive transmission let me uh, take that uh, slide then only will be able to know see from engine torque is coming okay and there are two reductions are there one is uh, that is a speed reduction torque multiplication that is one in transmission that i will be saying as gear ratio and another one is axle that is here i will be having a permanent uh, meshing gear that is already i told you my torque has to be uh, direction has to be changed in 90 degree so i will be using a, a crown wheel and bevel gear that gears will be in permanent reduction that is a final drive uh, speed reduction okay so two speed reduction is there i have to take into account okay so that only you see gr stands for gear back ratio and ar stands for back axle ratio now see <coughs> so this one i will uh, keep it there so how much torque will be available at the rear wheels i am getting a engine torque of this much value so how far i am going to take this torque to the road wheels so first of all you put engine torque the entire torque is going then you think uh, how much it will be reduced i have to consider what transmission efficiency see this will increase the engine torque whereas uh, this one transmission efficiency will decrease because it is due to friction so my engine torque is 100 newton per meter no my transmission efficiency will be 0.2 so when it's getting multiplied uh, some torque will be getting uh, reduced okay then this one is uh, in order to compensate for this uh, reduction that is i need more torque so that only i am having what gearbox and axle ratio so you can see a uh, gearbox is there and the final driver is there mainly gearbox is the main component to provide the required torque so you are able to understand how you are getting this formula what is the torque available at the rear wheel that is at the wheel wheel means tire engine torque is this much okay from engine from engine the torque is going to road wheels so what you are going to do how far it is changing i am taking engine torque because that is my input and uh, transmission efficiency i am taking into account then two uh, speed reduction devices that is gearbox and uh, back axle ratio okay next uh, uh, gr into ar i can write as capital g that is a g overall gear ratio i can write gr into ar okay now you know that is a uh, you see my typing now that is you know torque is equal to force into radius okay then if i want force force i'll be taking the r term there torque divided by r so this concept only i'm going to use this one is tractive uh, uh force okay tractive effort or tractive force we can uh, say that is my f tractive effort will be equal to that is t by r torque at wheels divided by radius of wheel okay torque at wheels divided by radius of wheel torque at the wheels you are writing like this you are writing te first te g efficiency of the transmission divided by r okay 
you copy the three formulas and write pe means engine brake power kilowatt te mean engine torque then transmission efficiency then write uh, over g capital g overall gear ratio okay so you copy this entire thing what is uh, shown in the screen you copy so i am keeping in a full screen mode okay no need of this one what i have typed that is for your understanding purpose only you copy the entire uh, thing this is very very required man just i can't skip i uh, note down this like that i can go because it should be written in your note then only you will be understanding the formula you will be familiar with the formula okay and you will be able to use it in the problems okay so what you are doing you copy this formula and tell me because for problematic paper you should be familiar with the formula main thing unit engine power should be in kilowatt torque newton meter so take down the unit r should be in meter Okay, sir. Okay. What about Ilavarsan? Ilavarsan, come in chat box and tell me whether you have copied or not, because this is very very important. Okay, good. Now we will proceed. So this formula only basics, okay? Then only we can solve the problem. Now see, my tractive effort and resistance. Already I told you know the F is the force that I am getting from where uh, engine. That is engine. Uh, last slide, see, engine power. is converted into engine torque engine power is nothing but uh, engine torque and engine torque from engine torque i am getting a torque at the rear wheels from torque at the rear wheels i am getting what tractive effort so now see whenever when i am driving the vehicle when my f is greater than resistance what will happen no i will be having some excess tractive effort that is excess f will be there that i can use it for acceleration hill climbing drop or pull see in a two wheeler you might have a driving okay uh, initially you will be putting in a first gear once you are overcoming the road resistance what you will be doing you will be accelerating the vehicle that is you will be uh, uh, reducing the torque and increasing the speed you will be going to the second gear where second gear will be producing a torque less compared to the first gear and uh, while going from first gear to second gear you will be increasing the speed so second gear maximum speed will be reached further you will proceed to third gear and fourth gear and uh, like this uh, you will be going for acceleration when the maximum speed is reached say you are traveling at 80 km per hour in a level road beyond that you can increase the speed at what happen at that time you will be in a top gear top gear will give uh, less torque so what will happen my f will be equal to r that is my tractive force will be equal to r so whenever my f is equal to r what will happen uh, you will be having you have to be traveling at constant speed okay no more acceleration you will be traveling at constant speed okay f will be equal to r okay then uh, you can uh, utilize the excess force 
for hill climbing drop for trail so these three things only will be using occasionally you will be using for uh, all the three also during uh, hill climbing you have to accelerate or otherwise you will be uh, pulling another vehicle okay and there is another term this one will be asked in uh, two marks how you are relating the engine speed n and vehicle speed v you understand carefully okay engine speed n and uh, vehicle speed uh, v okay engine speed will be rpm whereas uh, vehicle speed will be kilometer per hour okay engine speed is in rpm v is kilometer per hour see in uh, engineering uh, uh, that is a mechanics of machine let me type it okay then only will be knowing see in uh, engineering mechanics or uh, uh, mechanics of machine you might have studied what is the linear velocity that is in belt drive you may be uh, finding it like this okay that is wait for a second So see, this is a general formula, you know. V is equal to y into d into n divided by 60. I think this formula you will be knowing for finding out velocity. That is linear speed. Say meter per second, okay? For vehicle only, it will be kilometer per hour. V is equal to pi into d into n by 60, where d is the diameter, n is the speed. Okay? So this is uh, related to our ordinary mechanical component. Okay? when it is coming to vehicle what will happen in in this formula additional gear ratio i have to include because uh, the same v will not be coming already i told you know the same v i will not be getting at my road wheels depending upon my gear ratio only i will be getting a force that will be uh, giving the required v so for vehicle point of view what you have to do you have to modify this formula pi d n by g that is i have to include g gear ratio now this one pi d n by g into 60 is meter per second you convert into kilometer per hour for converting meter into kilometer what you will be doing that is uh, you will be typing what uh thousand that is a uh, i will be typing here then only you can understand well thousand meter is equal to 1 Kilometer, so I have to convert uh, this meter per second into kilometer per hour. So for converting meter, what I will be doing? A uh, term is in meter. So one meter will be equal to one by thousand kilometer. Okay. You are able to understand one meter is equal to one by thousand kilometer. So that only see, I am putting thousand here. This sixty is this one. One meter is equal to I am converted into kilometer. Okay, now it will be kilometer per hour. Okay, no need to modify this. Here I will explain. Next, I will be typing second. How to convert the second into hour? Okay, so second uh, hour is having what sixty into sixty. That is a uh, I can write one hour is equal to three thousand six hundred second. Okay, so then one second will be equal to will be putting one by three thousand six hundred. So in denominator you are putting what one by three thousand six hundred. That is going at the top side. In numerator you will put one by thousand. That is coming down. That is you can uh, understand. That is a while equation, one by thousand. Further divided by I am using divided, one by three thousand six hundred. So what will happen? This three thousand six hundred will be coming to the numerator, and thousand will be coming to the denominator. Okay. So see, now what I have done? This v is in kilometer per hour. Okay. This v is. Kilometer 
पर आवर प्रीवियसली इट इज मीटर पर सेकेंड सो आई एम पुटिंग एरो सी दिस वी इज किलोमीटर पर आवर ओके सो इन दिस टर्म द सेकेंड formula v is in kilometer per hour okay sir r eppadi sir meter la varum r na resistance force newton la dhaan sir varanum r meter la varum idu na solra unno and edathula radiation do pandringa ama radius tha adu unno and idukke na varala wait for okay now see 5d n g 60 What will happen? This sixty three thousand six hundred. You cancel it. Sixty is nothing but what? Three thousand six hundred will be sixty into sixty. So one sixty is getting cancelled. Sixty by thousand. Now see, I need a relation between n and v. See, I need a relation between n and v. That is rotational speed and linear speed. So what I am going to do is, I am keeping n. Divided by v, n by v in the right hand side. That is, I am taking this v to the, I am taking this v to the right hand side. That is, n by v. Then I am taking all the terms to the left hand side. So n by v is equal to thousand into g pi d into sixty. Okay, this d now only I am going to explain. This d will be nothing but that is a wheel diameter or tire diameter. I am replacing it by r. That is two into r. You may you will be knowing diameter is equal to two times of radius. So I am putting what two into r in this formula. R should be in meter. Okay. Then only I will be getting. See here in uh, engineering mechanics you will be using pi d n by sixty. No, in in this formula d is in meter. And n is in capital n is in RPM. So capital D unit will be meter, and n is in RPM. Okay. So what happens now? It is two R. So divide all this thousand by two five hundred five hundred by sixty. We'll be getting a five hundred sixty into pi pi. You put a value three point one four. So you will be having an expression. n is equal to 2.5 2.65 g by r there will be two questions okay uh, they they in uh, two more question they may ask write the relation between engine revolution and vehicle speed if it is asked like that just you write this n by v is equal to 2.65 into g by r otherwise for four marks they may ask you derive a relation between engine revolution and vehicle speed derive the relation between engine revolution and vehicle speed so what will happen n by v is equal to you have to derive starting from here okay this one and all no need to write see what i have typed no may to make you clear since it is in online mode so i am making it uh, clear okay so i am typing everything you you have to type uh, you have to write this one alone no need to write this 1000 uh, meter equal to 1 kilometer already you know but uh, in order to make it uh, more clear only i have typed here okay so this is the relation between engine revolution and vehicle speed you copy this no need to copy this one just copy just copy this one okay and you write v is in kilometer per hour r is in meter no need to copy the left hand side uh, sorry right hand side when i have explained you know i have typed you no know, no need to copy that just copy this very very important okay after copying you inform me any doubt you can ask Okay, sir. Copied. Okay. What about the other one? To consider the other one. The other one, come to the chat box. Whether you have copied or not. The other one, are you on the line? 
copying huh? okay to copy and put a message okay try to get a mobile so that you can speak you rectify your mic Person after copying, you put a message in type box. Another only one topic I will complete and uh, we will close the today class. Now, this one we will uh, see in the next class. I will explain only uh, one topic that is, uh, uh, let me show this uh, slide. I will explain this uh, graph in the next class, okay? I will explain this graph in the next class. Let me show the resistance to the vehicle motion as animation to you, okay? So that uh, you'll have somewhat uh, different uh, perspective. Showing some animation will be good for you. See, this will be good. It is explaining what is rolling resistance.
See, I want to ask you, when I'm playing a video in uh, YouTube, your uh, sound is uh, audible? You're able to hear that sound? Morning and then? That is uh, just I want to know. The sound is coming or not? Morning and then? Okay. Voice is low. Okay. I'm increasing the volume only. Then you have to connect into external speaker. See, it is explaining the volume. Thank you. 
time it will have access to profit, it will demand it all for the servers and PC, it will demand these are the things that are going to be the same. And this is why I mentioned that the option for end users is very friendly. Many things they will have not just on the web right now, but they have made it very encrypted. One such technology is the genetic implementation of Magia. Magia works by lifting the entire relay off the ground with the help of batteries that are presently at home. Magia trains are known to clock very high speeds, as fast as 600 kilometers per hour. This is partially made possible because Magia trains have been approved by the University of Istanbul Education System at RGC, and it is now being used to build up the Magia code. Now let's crown an example for the new control in the system that we have here with our new card design. You have seen advertisements of various manufacturers on the promotion stating that the two time models of theirs are able to improve the code efficiency of the car. These tires actually do because the weakness of the code in the system is not a very demanding need. With lesser resistance, lesser energy consumed, which leads to efficiency. Well, that's it for this video, guys. We'll be uploading more interesting videos such as this. So until then, stay tuned and stay safe. Okay, see very uh, informative video now. What is your opinion? Yes, yes, sir, but sound is too low, sir. Sound is too low. Huh? Let me, uh, yes, sir, I can't hear any, any sound, sir. Okay, let me uh, share this uh, link. Uh, that only I want to check. That is whenever I am playing a uh, video, you know. Uh, while uh, after recording it, uh, the sound is not coming. That is, I am not able to see in the recorded one. Okay, I have shared the link. Go through. See what they are showing. No, it is a very good uh, video. They have explained you rolling resistance. One of the important. Oh, okay, uh, sir. That is when you are driving, you are uh, switching off the engine. Okay, you have accelerated to 60 km per hour, and you are switching off the engine. After some time, uh, your vehicle is going to come to rest. Why it is coming? Due to what? Rolling resistance. Okay. And he has explained a tire deformation. That is a tire without the load, the tire is not getting deformed. When the tire deformation is more, what happens? My contact area is getting increased. So my resistance also is getting increased. Okay. Next is, uh, he told uh, in trains, uh, there is no deformation, but uh, typing of surface, type of surface. So you have to understand Rolling resistance not only to tire deformation, due to the contact. Whenever there is a contact is there, friction will come. Uh, two surfaces will not be uh, good. Okay, so friction will be coming. He explained the uh, micro structure and uh, the current technology uh, in uh, trains. He explained magnetic levitation. There are uh, no contact, so that we can reduce uh, mag rolling resistance. And he explained about the uh, tires. That is energy consumption. That is for reducing rolling tires. And he has explained how much uh, reduction in rolling resistance will improve my fuel economy. That is very, very important now because uh, when we are operating on buses, trucks, that will be going for uh, more distances. So when I'm uh, reducing by a smaller amount, what will happen? I will be able to get uh, more uh, say, mileage or I can save my fuel. Okay. So that uh, I, my cost can be reduced. Okay. So very nice video. So whenever uh, class is there uh, for f five or ten minutes, I'll be sharing this uh, important uh, uh, videos or technical videos, and I'll be presenting it uh, same so that you will not be getting bored, and uh, you'll be having some uh, content beyond the syllabus also. Okay. So we will be seeing in the next class. Okay. Bye. Any doubts? If you don't have any doubt, uh, you can leave. Okay? Thank you.